Okay, I think uh, we'll get started. So, as I said, good morning, everybody. Hope you've got a nice cup of tea. Uh, welcome to our virtual best practices visit to BT. Um, BT are one of the um, ex of the European Contact Centre and Customer Service Award winners. They won gold last year. Um, and they're going to talk to us today about implementing an award-winning culture as well. So it's going to be great. Um, it's, this isn't a webinar. It isn't deaf by PowerPoint. Um, what I'll be doing today is interviewing the BT team, which you, you we should see on your, um, on your right-hand side. You see all their lovely faces. They've joined us today um, from home and also from the office as well. So uh, you'll get a sneaky peek into, into uh, the contact centre operation. So... Um, just a little bit of housekeeping for everybody. There is um, a Q and A button. We will be um, answering Q and A as best as we can throughout the session. Uh, we've got Sam from BT joining us and she will be um, updating those questions. If there is anything that we can't answer, we will absolutely take those away and we'll make sure that we get an answer to you. We are recording the session and it will be available um, on our website for all members alongside um, the answers to those that Q&A as well. Um, so don't worry. Um, but, but, you know, keep chatting to us throughout. And as we go through um, the interviews, um, we'll try and pick up those questions as we can along. So thank you so much for the BT team to join us. Thank you, Stephen, Jill, Lee, Michael and uh, Gemma's joining us in a moment as well. So thank you so much for spending um, the morning with us and sharing um, um, what it is to be a winner, actually, um, you know, and also to share what you guys have been doing as well. So um, we'll, we'll move, we'll, we'll get started. So as I said, it's not an online seminar. It's an online seminar, sorry, not a webinar. Um, we have taken off your video cameras um, for all of those that are attending. But as I said, we have got the Q&A button, so please uh, feel free to join in throughout there. We've also muted your microphones, um, and that's just so that we've got a better noise quality and you're able to hear everybody um, and all the speakers and panellists. And um, as I had already mentioned, we will be um, uh, recording, so you can play this back and you can share it with the rest of your teams as well. I just wanted to um, share with you some of the other events that we've got coming up. As you know, we do a lot of special interest groups. We've got our retail special interest group, insurance, social housing, complaint management, and also quality management as well. And they're, they're happening every month. Um, all the dates are on the website. If you want somebody from your organisation to join those, please do let us know. Drop us an email at any time and we can get um, you involved in those groups. Um, our next um, online seminar uh, is on the 10th of June and it's the impact of COVID-19 on people policies. So we're joined by Peninsula who are an employment law specialist and they're going to answer all your questions around people policy, employment law, risk, health and safety, all of those questions. So please join us on that as well. Um, and then on the 17th of June we've got the future of retail contact centres as well. Um, and that is just kind of, you know, the, the changing face of contact centre and retail, which, you know, is, is very um, interesting at the moment. Also, um, I just want to remind everybody, as we have winners from BT today, um, that our awards programme has, has opened um, and the entry deadline is on the 28th of August. Um, we have some new categories this year um, and actually in, in response to the current situation, so as you can see, um, with all the pink news, we've got Responding in a Crisis, Best Partnership Solution, Effective Homeworking Programme, uh, which lots of you guys will, will be deploying at this, at this moment in time, um, how leadership has responded in this crisis, um, how people have responded by supporting colleagues, um, and customers, um, you know, so, that, so there's lots of new categories. Please have a look at those. Um, as well as the ones that we've got from the existing. There's a toolkit online. There's lots and lots more information. Um, and as you'll hear today, you'll probably get some top tips today on, on what it takes to be a winner as well. Um, so um, if you do need anything else, please let us know and we can, we can um, let you know. So thanks for, again, the BT guys for joining us. Um, just to kick off, we've got a little tour of the... Um, of the organisation, so um, of the BT Contact Centre. Here we go, we're gonna go around it. 
Hello and welcome to BT Newcastle. My name is Michael Batchador and I'm the office manager here. We would love to have you here in person, but for obvious reasons, we can't. But I'm extremely happy that we've got a way of being able to showcase what we do here in Newcastle in this new method. So why don't you come for me and have a look inside? Hi, right, welcome to the inside of BT Newcastle. As you can see, a massive building of great size. The building itself holds around about 1,100 people. In sales of attention, our function, on this side of the building, we take up around about 360 people. Uh, the rest of the site is made up with service colleagues, complaint colleagues, and some of our specialist teams. We're all multifunctional centers. Recently, we've gone through a massive difference in transformation. And as I said earlier on, we hold around about 1,100 people here in Newcastle. But currently, due to COVID-19, probably down to around about 250 to 280 people here, obviously uh, adhering to all the social distancing policy, as you'll be able to see out in the Bayoldi site. So. It's very quiet, very different what we're used to, but we're still putting the customers at the heart of everything we do and making sure we can give them great service by people in the building and having people at home servicing our customers. The building itself is around about 22 years old and it's in really good shape, really looking good. Um, but we need to modernise, so we're about to go through a massive transformation in a new project. Uh, it's going to take around between nine months to a year, where we're going to be modernising the building to be in a state of an art building and a place that everyone's going to absolutely love to work in. Come with me and we'll have a sneak peek at what that looks like. So as I said, we're going to go through a great transformation and make this site look absolutely amazing. At the minute, this is really what the site would look like. As much as it looks good, the future is totally different. Come with me and let's have a look. actually we see totally different sort of look to the, the building we've got designs where we have some more meeting rooms with state-of-art technology that we can be able to showcase some of the great things that we do in newcastle we have some fantastic areas to chill out as well great booths which will have technology connections for people to relax and and have a conversation and talk about areas where the advisor will be online speak to the customers brand new seats Fantastic carpets. Obviously, everyone will be having their dual screens to be able to service their customers. We've got a lovely area like this, very modern, very different. We can just sit down, read a book, relax, and enjoy your time when you're here in Newcastle. It's all about being the best place to work. Right, now let's have a look at some of the things we do to engage our employees on a day to day basis. Come with me. Here are some of the great boards that we use on a daily basis with our advisors to help them learn about what's happening in our business. we have boards over here that talk about some of the great initiatives in BT. We've got some fantastic progression and development boards, which you're going to hear a great deal about later on from Gemma and Jill. Really exciting. We also showcase the awards we won. Obviously, we won the European Contact Centre Award, which was an amazing achievement. Also, recently, we're in BT here in Newcastle. It gives everybody in the rest of BT and the whole of their country. We won the best contact centre in the whole of sales and attention, and we won the best for our customers. So great achievements to really showcase why Newcastle is the best place to be. It's been great hosting you today on a virtual tour of our boy BT Call Centre. It's been great having you, and hopefully we're going to see you again in the future. But for now, goodbye, and I'll see you soon. Great, thank you very much, Michael. That was fantastic, um, a video. And just like a little insight into kind of um, the, the site that we all would, would have been um, coming along to. So just can you give us a little bit of um, a background about BT Newcastle and, and what kind of um, activity that you do there? That'd be great if you would. Yep, hello, everybody. I hope you can hear me well. Uh, I'm very different watching that video back from doing live tours that we normally do in Newcastle, very different. Um, but yeah, the background of our, our team, our team were formed around about five years ago um, under the leadership of Rachel Hancock, who was our uh, head of at the time. Um, it was a very newly formed team. We had uh, some people that were new to progression into the role as ops managers. We had some people that had been uh, hired externally. Um, and we also had some within the team that were with uh, massive experience, which uh, I'll come on to speak to um, shortly about who's who. Um, Rachel had joined us from HR, so she had a very much background in HR and sales. Um, and uh, she came with a great leadership skill that she installed in us very quickly. Um, we bonded as a team uh, really well um, and become a team very quickly that delivered uh, really strong results. 
uh, run, but balanced really well with some uh, some great people uh, run results as well. We have a thing called uh, Your Say in BT, uh, run, which is where we really measure how our guys are feeling uh, run, about the company, about us as a leadership team, uh, run, and the results that we've been delivering over the last few years have um, been well in the high, uh, top 25% of the country. So it shows that we, we deliver results, but also deliver the, the great balance of uh, um, the people being happy to be at work. Uh, um, and that's led to us being a, a bit of a trial-centric center. Uh, um, any new initiative that's happening across the whole of BT uh, um, comes through uh, Newcastle or some shape or form. Uh, it means that we're really being involved in shaping the future. I think that's some of the reasons why it led us to, to winning this award, uh, um, because the people feel like they're, they're going through the journey with BT within our team. Uh, um, and like I said on, on the video, we've won multiple awards. Obviously, winning the European Contact Centre was an amazing achievement, something obviously we've never applied for before. Uh, um, but within BT itself, like I said, uh, we go to an event every year in, in Birmingham uh, um, and go across every site in the whole of the UK. Uh, um, and within Newcastle itself, being a small centre compared to everyone across the country, uh, um, and winning the, the best contact centre of the whole year, uh, um, but then also winning the best for our customers. Also within that, we had the best advisor of the year as well in Newcastle. Um, it just shows that it's a, a massive group effort in Newcastle for how we're doing it. Uh, um, and we've got strong development in there. So like I said before, Rachel uh, was our boss at the time and she shaped the team. Uh, um, Rachel has now obviously moved on and, and progressed now to be a director within e-stores in the Midlands. Uh, um, so it's shown a, a general progression route of her moving on. We've had people within our team that are on the call that have developed into new roles as well. Um, and new people join our team. So there's constantly people moving up and moving in, which is great, obviously, to, for people um, from an advisor level, seeing what the progression route look, looks like. Um, and I think one thing we've learned within this journey as well about how, being, uh, how to be resilient, I think that's probably one of the biggest skills we've had. And I think um, when we've come to this COVID-19 recently, I think that's really showing the journey as a team we've gone through for how we've supported each other, um, but also supported the, the people around us. I think we've we're never prepared for what happened with COVID-19, but what it did show that we were really, really prepared to be resilient. Um, it's something that I'm extremely proud of. You, you see some of us, like you said, working from home, some of us in the office, like, like I am today. Um, so it just shows the resilient part of our team has been phenomenal. Um, and I've talked a bit about obviously the operation. I don't even want to go onto the first slide there for us, please, Sarah. Yeah. So just, just as the slide's coming up, so um, obviously it, it, within BT, uh, we have different functions within sales of attention. Uh, the key function across the whole of BT is uh, sales centers, uh, um, value centers, loyalty centers, and specialist centers as well. In Newcastle, uh, we're unique to three of them functions. Uh, um, one is our, our value centers, uh, commercial sport that we have here in Newcastle, uh, and our loyalty teams as well. Uh, um, like I said, commercial sport it, it is very unique. It's, it's in Newcastle, Newcastle only, nowhere else in the country. It's the only part of the whole of the whole of BT, and they provide and manage BT Sport into the commercial venues across the whole of the UK. Uh, they create massive revenue for the business, and they're the only one of the only operations within the whole of BT that are an end-to-end -end operation. So they manage everything from selling the product, service the product billing the product and then giving any sort of assistance they do. And also the people in there, the advisors case manage every account as well. So it means they give a real personal experience to their customers uh, um, and make it very uh, um, easy for them to do business with. Uh, um, and obviously uh, with the commercial sport, we're, we've gone through some testing times at the minute with uh, most sport being canceled. Uh, um, but the guys are showing their resilience in there to support other parts of the business really quick, really easily uh, um, to make sure that the, the company is ready to move on to the next sort of stages. And then we have obviously our value part of the business. So as it says on the screen, this is where we look to add value to our existing customers' relationships uh, and help them get the best experience. Again, this has been fundamental, uh, um, especially during COVID-19. Uh, um, a lot of people are working from home. The kids are doing homeschooling. Kids will want to be connected through gaming, social media. So this, uh, these are the sort of centers that look at some of the fantastic products we do, like BT Halo, um, which really gives the customer the best connection, but also looks at growing partnerships with BT for multiple products, so it's easier for the customer. Um, and then we've got the loyalty team, where, as it says on the screen, we look to protect our most vulnerable customers. Um, and this is any time through any sort of phase of the, the, the customer's lifestyle with BT. Um, and again, linked perfectly into the COVID-19, where we had uh, a massive bulk of customers being maybe furloughed or uh, lo losing uh, um, uh, careers and jobs. 
And we really look after how we protect that customer and make sure they've got the right deal for them at the right price point. Um, and we look at keeping that customer and then they can grow their account when it's the right time. In loyalty, we do inbound, outbound, and we do chat functions. So we're really there for our customers in any shape or form and whatever they feel more confident in how they speak to us. Chat functions are a new part of loyalty that we've just started doing recently. And we've seen a huge success for our customers sometimes wanting to speak rather than tel telephone. Um, so that's something that's definitely uh, helping us move forward with the, the digital economy that we're living. Uh, and then the final point, sorry, Sarah. So how, how have you guys coped with that change in vol customer volume, you know, like maybe a reduction in sport volume and, a, and a, you know, a higher volume in value? Have your guys reacted pretty well to that change? Yeah, 100%. I think there's two things we've done to make sure we react to that. First of all, obviously, we made sure we looked after our people through this, and we, we made sure home working was an option quite quickly. So we've got about 65% of our workforce working from home and about 35% in, the, in their workforce, which means that the, the, the advisor was more comfortable, so they were then more adaptable to, to servicing our customers. Uh, and like I said before, we had people like Commercial Sport that stepped up to help in these. Um, so if value seem to have a, a surge of calls, um, they can overflow into some guys commercial support helping or our loyalty colleagues. If we were slightly quieter, we could then service the customers. Um, so yeah, I think everybody stepped up to help each other when we've been busy. And then the same, like I said, at the minute, we're, we're maybe a little bit quiet in some queues, but the chat functions proved a huge success that customers maybe don't want to sit on phones and they, they expect call, call queues. So they're doing it through bt.com instead. So we've definitely been able to do that. Great, brilliant, thank you. Excellent, if you could go on the next slide, I'll just talk a little bit through of who's who and who you've got on the call today. Some fantastic photos of the guys. Um, obviously, like I said, myself first, I'm one of the ops managers here in Newcastle. Uh, I manage a lot of the inbound, outbound, and the chat functions. Um, I'm a little bit of a key fact about myself, I've worked for the company for 12 years. Um, I'm, like I said, when the team was newly formed, I was given the opportunity to step up to be an ops manager. Um, um, and more recently, when Rachel did move on for about the last five months, I've been uh, acting head of sales in Newcastle, uh, South Shields in Glasgow, which has given us a great opportunity to, to look at my development as well. Um, I'm, I'm lucky enough, and with most people you look at on the, on the screen, we started as advisors and work through the ranks of advisors to team leaders, ops, managers, uh, and different roles. So it shows that the, the development within the company is 100% unique. Um, um, we've got Jill Brooks who's very much uh, um, the, the experienced one amongst us. Uh, um, she's the, the operations manager for commercial sport. Uh, um, she's got 26 years service within wow. BT uh, um, and 19 years as ops manager. So she's someone that we definitely look to for the experience that she has uh, across BT. And it's definitely very unique and helps us massively. Uh, um, she's uh, managed many operations, uh, experienced operations across the whole of BT. She was my boss at one stage. So uh, um, it, it really shows that she's... Uh, um, versatile moving around the business and de uh, always delivers great results. Um, we've got Steve Beresford, who's the Ops Manager in Value, um, for Inbound and Outbound, uh, probably the newest person of our team. Uh, he's had six years service within BT and stepped in uh, as the Ops Manager about nine months ago when, when Gemma Lee moved into a new role. Um, previously to that, Steve has got great experience as being uh, an operational performance lead within South Shields. Um, Stephen again started an advisor, moved to a manager, um, and then moved to the performance lead and now moved to, to, to the ops manager's role. And I know you'll be hearing from Stephen a bit more about his role uh, shortly. Um, we've got Gemma Lee, who's a, a seconded learning partner specialist at the moment. She was the ops manager in value. Uh, again, uh, um, Gemma is somebody we recruited uh, um, externally from EE when Rachel formed our team. It was just actually before BT and EE did uh, start the merge, so it wasn't part of the merge. It was actually somebody we, we headhunted outside of BT that we wanted in our operation. Uh, um, and uh, she was uh, what a great experience from her previous roles into our team. Uh, um, recently, about nine months ago, she did move uh, um, to the next stage of development. Uh, um, and like I said, she's been seconded for about nine months in the learning partner specialist now as well. Uh, um, and then we've got uh, Lee Reed. Uh, um, again, a massive experienced team leader uh, for commercial sport. Uh, um, definitely somebody I think uh, across the business in Newcastle, somebody everyone looks up to. Uh, um, he's been with BT for 22 years. Uh, he's been team leading commercial sport for the last four years. Uh, um, previously, before that, uh, Lee had a fantastic role as an attendance manager in sales and retention, really helping the well-being of advisors uh, um, in the business or maybe out of the business for any reason. Um, but really helped us make sure that we're, we've got people uh, on the phones answering the calls for our customers. 
So as you can see, we've got a, a very unique team with great experience, short experience, but we're, we're all bringing a massive part to the Newcastle heart. So it's really great. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Michael. And thanks for, um, you know, as I said, giving us the time with all your team today. So um, we'll, we'll pick up with you a little bit later, actually. You're going to stay with us for the rest of the session, aren't you? Um, so I'd yes. like to introduce uh, Gemma Lee. Gemma, you're the learning and development partner for the operations, aren't you? Hi, Gemma. Hi. How yes, I certainly am. And, you, and you're working from home today? I am. I, I've been actually working from home since the end of March. Much, but I think only this week I'm actually getting used to it, if I'm being honest. I know, it does take some getting used to it, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Can you tell us a little bit about your role then um, at BT? Yeah, of course. So I've been in this role just over nine months, uh, just as what Michael was saying. Uh, the learning and development partner role is a really niche role within the operation and it bridges the gap between learning and development and the operation itself. Uh, some of the key responsibilities that I've got within the role at the moment is I manage the stakeholder relationships between learning and development and the operation right up to director. Um, I'll support the director and his team in understanding and engaging their priorities for the next 12 months and it's my job to establish where we've got a real gap or real opportunity to enhance further skill or capability within our operation both at advisor level and leadership and then look to work with the operational stakeholders to build a solution uh, that we can then bring to the table that will improve both effectiveness and have overall impact whether that be on a performance perspective or to the overall customer experience. Great. And Michael's already said um, a little bit about your history how did you find yourself in, in that role? Yeah, I've been, I was at EE for five years actually and I started there as a sales leader, um, worked across many different areas in EE, uh, I think the only one I never went into was collections um, because I'm quite a commission driven individual so it was good to stay in sales and retention overall. Um, luckily enough when I was there I'm very keen around my own personal development, I take a proactive approach to that so within the last three years of being in EE I was a second op operations manager across a number of functions covering things like um, maternity leave etc um, but there was never that permanent position there um, and then quite rightly I got approached uh, by BT to apply for the external role they were advertising at the time applied for it and was very lucky uh, to be given the opportunity and since then my progressions just got even better so under Rachel Hancock uh, I think Michael alluded to it earlier she is a real advocate for people progression and capability and actually putting the autonomy back on yourself to say actually what do you want to do when actually stretching and challenge more in a really supportive way but to go out with comfort zones and try new things um, so I was with EE, uh, sorry, with BT for about two years when I started the opportunity of covering for head off. So I covered uh, Rachel Hancock for all leave and then started working on key initiatives across the sales and retention function on things like supporting other sites with complex HR case management, working as nutrition lead across sales and retention and then more frequently supporting uh, one of the heads of particularly in driving value. Um, and then just as that was kind of coming to a head and following the absolutely phenomenal year we had last year with just award winning after award winning, which, you know, to go out on a succumb and leaving that behind, uh, I think it would just give us the springboard to try something new and really get a breadth for the organisation across both brands rather than just stay in silo BT. Great. And you've, you've mentioned the award winning programme, actually, and that, and that was one of the key factors of you, you winning the award. Can you tell me a little bit about that learning development programme that you've got for your, for your employees? Yes, absolutely. If you move to the next slide. I think it's fair to say that actually our development programme starts from the day that somebody is actually recruited into the business. So um, learning development doesn't start on day one uh, of someone entering a building. It actually starts within the recruitment process. And we support the recruitment team ensuring that we are looking for individuals who've got the right potential, not necessarily experience, to really be able to drive our key principles that underpin our values as a business. From that, when the individual comes in, depending on whether they what specialist function they go into, they will go into what was fundamentally a classroom-based training for anything between two weeks to six weeks, depending on the area and the expertise that needed to be involved in that. 
these individuals will then be supported through a transitioning or grad bay period and we give them a six months time to competency to really support them and bring them up to speed so that actually from the six month mark they feel really comfortable and confident in being able to bring a brilliant customer experience but with it underpin the core metrics that we're asking them to deliver as an individual as part of that, what we then do is we look to build in life support where we've got change or go to market strategies, things like new products launching, where we can actually bring that to the forefront and upskill our advisors further. Um, but they're always underpinned through our core five principles that are what we ask every advisor to turn up to work ready to do. And those simply are things like listen, acknowledging, ask great questions looking to find a solution that fits the customer's need rather than just offer a feature blasting process so then therefore we know a customer's going to take it it's going to be real value to them in their household but actually do it with real quality and in doing that and that underpins everything we do we know that we're going to be delivering a really strong customer MPS which is one of the key uh, priorities that we have as a business aside from that what we then do is we also uh, and I'm responsible for looking at the capability as it is now but future proofing both the advisors and leaders through programs such as personal learning journey and be your best to really harness that and constantly develop as with the industry develops that we can keep up with competitors but actually so that we're offering a real progression for individuals so that even if these individuals didn't move out with their particular role they're still being progressed and developed in a way that they want to learn and that's always a mixture of things like classroom based webex self-led uh, even things like um, snippets or webinars that they can go away and learn themselves so it's a real variety to target people's learning styles if you move on to the next slide um, what I can do is give you a bit of an overview of how we do that so we use two very distinctive uh, learning platforms within BT and DE actually and these stem across both the context center and retail what we've got is we've got Digital Academy which is an online learning platform that can host anything from e-learns um, to online journals uh, to the, and webinars and it's a one-stop shop for all learning so we direct the individual there and then we'll give them a curriculum assigned that they would then go and complete within a scheduled uh, time or they can go on and complete additional activities in their own time as part of that personal development journey. We then also have a really funky tool called iLearn uh, and it's one of my favorite tools within learning and development. This is a gamified um, learning and reinforcement tool and what it does is um, it allows the user to go on and it can either compete in a game uh, where every time they hit a certain level it unlock a question and there's a maximum of five questions a day or if they're short on time like me I do it over a cup of tea in the morning do me five questions on a particular topic set and what it does is it actually then looks at the topic set of information and cross-references that against what my knowledge was before I took that set versus when I've completed it but what was my overall confidence level and from that managers can go in and use a leader zone to pull that information so they can get really tailored rich data on individuals to help with their coaching life as well so that every individual's coaching journey is tailored to them and what they need to be able to be successful. Right. And, and I suppose this digital platform that you guys have already been using and up and running has kind of really helped you with the current situation with COVID-19 as well. Can you tell us a little bit more about how, how you've then approached learning and development in the, in, in the current circumstances? Yeah, absolutely. If you move to the next screen. This just gives you a little bit of an overview about the changes that we've undertook across both BT and EA during COVID-19. And this is just the last five weeks. Um, so as you can see, um, we were heavily focused on face-to-face -face training, and especially in BT. Uh, it's always been the way people are comfortable with it. It's what we would call the norm. And actually what we've had to do is really switch that to think about digital um, solutions we can deploy, but in really succinct bite-sized modular chunks that people can take it in whilst they're at home, given that their support from a leader may be virtual because the leader may still be in the contact center. So what we've done is we've actually flipped that on the head and what was probably significantly, probably 95% uh, face to face training, we're now 30% with 70% of it being hosted digitally. And actually most of those modules have been hosted by iLearn because what we can do with that as well is put out communications and videos to embed understanding not only on training, but key communications that are coming through with regards to well-being, 
guidance on social distancing to really encompass so when advisors are working from home they feel supported in the round rather than just from a training perspective what is interesting to see since we've done this not only has the digital skills element this is the pdp section around coaching emotional intelligence you can see they've gone up um they've actually quadrupled within the last five weeks alone with uh, nine and a half thousand skills being delivered and actually when you look at that now we've shifted where we're now delivering 51 percent of overall learning by a mobile uh, which has never been heard of in bt before so i think now what we're looking to do is think about this great achievement that we've delivered in the last five weeks and we're looking about how we can then bring that in to become the norm because what we're finding from advisor feedback particularly is that they love the modular view rather than sitting in a classroom for a day they love the bite-sized chunks and actually giving them the autonomy and trust to go and do some self-led learning within a designated time with that I learn as a reinforcement embedding tool is demonstrated some significant knowledge uplifts with up to 24% in some topic files. So it's been really successful for us. Um, and actually I think it's given me a great springboard into thinking about how we want to operate in the future. Uh, yeah, it's, it's great to see, isn't it? That kind of agility and being able to move really fast and, and kind of giving people what they want and, and learning styles uh, yeah, and areas to do it in. Great, fantastic. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Gemma. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Great. So I'd like to um, introduce Jill. As, um, as Michael's already said, Jill Brooks um, has been with BT for a long time. She's the Operational Manager for Commercial Sport. Welcome, Jill. Thank you. Great stuff. So tell me a little bit about your role then, Jill. Um, so I manage the end-to-end -end commercial sport operation in Newcastle. Um, we provide um, sport to all licensed venues throughout the UK, um, be that your football stadiums, uh, pub chains, hotels, um, offshore oil rigs. My guys um, provide that service from the very outset and if there's any after sales billing um, or any inquiries that our customers have or if indeed they would like to recontract the service with us then my guys here in Newcastle do that and we built that um, operation from scratch when we launched BT Sport in 2013. Wow, great stuff. So um, Gem has told us a little bit about the whole learning development platform. How does that yeah. look as an operational manager? How do you plan for succession and career development? Um, so I suppose succession planning in Newcastle is all really about identifying and um, developing future leaders for us. So that's about um, pot the potential to fill business uh, positions across our business at all levels um, so we do use those tools and those platforms um, intrinsically if you like so we plan for all contingencies the the development um, career opportunity really is led by leads in each of the centres across Newcastle who lead the facilitation of the development initiatives that we have which are local programs designed to engage and motivate to develop our people um, but particularly those who we, we identify as being at a good work level um, and getting them to move to a brilliant work level. We do this really initially before um, we review performance. We look at their attitude and their capability in the, the previous year. We look at regular one-to-one -one interactions, the coaching that they've had, and we work really closely with them um, under constant review um, of actions and activities so that they've got a real and clear introduction to our online tools, um, which Jen has men Jen mentioned before, and that they understand the career pathways within a, a performance development plan or a personal development plan which will help them move forward with their, their job choices um, and their future job experiences. I think the, um, the Digital Academy in particular brings together different ways of learning for everybody across the business. Um, we use that a lot in Newcastle continuously to develop those skills but particularly around the, um, the ability to be able to connect and learn and grow um, and we use guest speakers from all levels mainly at senior level um, to share their best practices as well they do videos and people can watch to see how their career path has has guided them through to the level that they're at but we particularly want all of our people to um to see their potential and to think beyond limits um we've, we've really simplified the way that we, we talk to people we give them real um clearer choices um very obvious career paths um and we want everybody to be really curious about what's out there what's available to them and how we can support and help them to explore things outside the 
normal um, roles and their, their comfort zone, I suppose. So we very much encourage um, everybody to have the conviction to make a real bold choice and, and move on and develop themselves. Yeah, and that can always be a challenge, that transparency of where you go next, isn't it? What role and how you go to develop there. Um, and you talked about that, you've made that a lot clearer. How Has it yeah. been successful? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we're all motivated by different things um, and it's very successful. We get to know our people really well here. Um, we understand what makes everybody tick and I think that's key to our success. It's it's sort of been the first step for everybody um, to a, have a, an inspiring and brilliant conversation, I suppose, but also to be consistent in our approach with ongoing coaching and, and sharing that best practice. And I think we've got a really engaging and productive environment here in Gosforth um, and that challenge and motivates people really just to do their best all of the time um, we've got a supportive performance management uh, program in place and I think we've got a great cross-functional work and community as well across all the centres um, and that boosts everybody's morale it encourages motivation it, it enhances people's quality of life when they're at work that work-life balance gives them a really healthy relationship I think with BT so everyone from day one as Gemma said earlier is given exactly the same opportunity to learn and develop in BT um, and that includes a number of different things, be it their, their awards, their recognition um, and the, the opportunity to learn using our, our great systems that we've got. But I think many of the people in Gosforth that have benefited from um, this kind of approach are now moving on in their career and they're taking great leaps and steps um, into areas which they wouldn't necessarily have gone into. And that's guided them just based on their current skills and what they've learned up to this point. And I think just a measure of that for us, um, all of our people are given really great feedback and they're given the opportunity to give us feedback as well um, and the the results that we have Michael touched on before for um, for your say our, our company's um, feedback tool all of the centres in Newcastle are regularly in the 90% mark which is in the top 25% of BT overall so I think that's testament to the to the work that we do there with them um, guiding and developing our people yeah and how do you encourage your team manager population to kind of get involved in their own development? Um, you know, what, what tips have you got there for us? I think there's, there's tons of, um, like I said before, there's tons of tools there that are available for everybody at all levels. Um, and I think the, the, the biggest part of that is the, the team leader and the, the, um, the career choices coaching. So being the best program um, we, we had last year, which really touches into how to be a great leader. It provides all business essentials, um, how to, to lead teams, how to understand change, how to coach, how to develop your people as well. And I think everybody signed up for that um, it's really you know it empowers the the team leaders to absolutely be um, confident in their own career but also therefore able to guide and support their their team as well and their people through the same thing so um, it's almost just a, a, a given um, it's not something that we, we pressure anybody to do there's an opportunity there if people want to do that they can um, but I think that you know we've probably got 99% of our people always sign up to it because they can see the great benefit that, that it, um, it provides. Yeah. And you can, you can definitely see that just from Michael's introduction about you guys as a team. You've moved around quite a lot. You've, yeah. you've been at various roles. Um, obviously, you know, you know you, that shows it's quite supportive succession planning, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. I think it's... Sorry. Go on, sorry. I, I interrupted you there. Sorry, say that again. I'm just thinking how your role's changed since um, COVID-19. I know you're, you're in the office at the moment. How's it changed? Uh, my role personally, I'm, I'm working between the office and at home. I've got um, about two thirds of my operation are all working from home at the moment. And some of those who either can't work from home or have chosen to stay in the office um, are here sitting around me. So I like to make sure that I'm quite flexible and I'm supporting everybody. So um, I suppose um, social media and the likes of Zoom um, Microsoft Teams, that sort of tool is making a huge difference for us. So we have daily check-ins. Um, we have, a, you know, just to make sure that everybody's okay, they're safe, they're comfortable, they're well, um, but also that they're, they're able to do their job um, at the same time from their home or from the environment in which they're working in here, um, where they're socially distanced and everywhere is perfectly clean and tidy. And, you know, that they feel comfortable and able to do um, a great service for all of our customers. And I think the the guys in my operation have very much been um, 
really resilient, I suppose, to change over these last few months because our pubs, clubs and commercial venues are, are more or less um, closed, uh, which particularly football, you know, has stopped. So in that, um, that, that whole bubble, I suppose, my guys almost overnight had to train really quickly and retrain to support and help the rest of the business to keep all of our customers across the UK connected and I'm really pleased to say that they've, they've, they've done that with you know a real seamless um, end-to-end -end element of being encouraged being motivated and, and actually feeling as if they're a huge part and important to to what we're doing for the UK just now so um, I'm, I'm really proud of what we've, we've achieved with that. Brilliant thank you very much thanks Jill. Great. Thank you. So I'm joined now by Stephen. So Stephen is the operational manager for inbound and outbound calls as well. Welcome, Stephen. Hi, Sarah. How are you today? I'm very good, thank you. Good. Yeah, I noticed you're in the office as well today. Yeah, I think um, it's a good point you touched on there. I think, you know, different operations require different types of support. And I think everybody on this call is, is really flexible. So, you know, if, if it allows, we, we are working in the office, but I think also it's about trying to create some uh, extra distance at home for people as well. So I think it just shows it's another uh, added um, arm to this team. I think the, the flexibility that we, that we provide, you know. Yeah, great. So, so tell us a little bit about your role at BT. Yeah, I think so. So my role at BT, um, I'm an operations manager, um, and the main part of the role is to oversee um, the safe and sustainable day-to-day -day operation in the centre. The, the key focus is definitely um, around the customers, and I think that's really important because they're at the heartbeat of what we do, and, and everything that we do ties back to that. Talk about constantly refer to it, um, every bit of coaching, um, every, every incentive, it all links back into, into, into the customer. Another key part of the rule is about balancing the business's KPIs and protecting the bottom line. That's really important because as a business, we want to grow year on year and that's vital so we can keep delivering exceptional customer experiences. So investing in technology, investing in the latest thing, you know, everything moves at 100 miles an hour. So we want to be at the forefront of that all of the time. I think another really important part of my role um, is the development of, of the team leaders. The guys spoke a lot there around some of the, the programs that we have, but actually the fundamentals of the role around how we coach, how we adapt coaching, especially uh, in, a, in a time like this, using new tools, teams, um, you know, social distancing uh, kind of setups, maybe where people have never done that before, and showing people what good looks like. They're all fundamental um, aspects of my role that I, that I try to coach and pass on to my team. Great and, and t tell me a little bit about how you use that kind of learning development framework with your teams as well and, and your managers. Yeah, I think what I do is I talk a lot about my journey. Um, I think there's, there's a few key components um, that, that went into, you know, me sitting here today. And it's mainly because of the team around me. And, and I know, again, it was touched on before on that, that network and that um, the support mechanisms. But I cannot stress enough how important that is. I've, I used to work for Gemma. I used to work for Michael. You know, I've, I've, I've gone to Jill many, many times for advice. And that's really helped and shaped me to, to, be, in, to be into this role. I think also having the flexibility of seeing other, other parts of the business and then relaying that to people um, you know, at, a, at a team leader level really inspires them to really say, actually, this company will support you. There's many, many opportunities out there and the pathway is there. But I think we're also really clear with people to say, you know, the pathways are there, but it, it's also up to yourself. We will help you to unlock your potential, but it is very much on the individual as to, as to how they will get there. And do you build in time for people for their own development? Do they get that as part of their, um, you know, their weekly weekly opportunity, like a couple of hours a week, that kind of stuff? Yeah, very much so. Um, I'm very keen on the on on the one to one time. Um, but I always talk to my team a lot around, you know, come with a come with a solution um, to a problem rather than just a problem. So. A lot of times I'll see it, the guys look like, you like, have 45 minutes to yourself on this day, on that day, in, invest in your own learning, um, you know, use the digital academy, use some of the great tools that, that Gemma had spoke about, um, but think outside of the box as well. What are other leaders doing in, you know, in, in other areas? What's happening in sport? Um, what's happening in, in, in culture? What, what little tips and hints can you take from them? And what can that you then, 
what can they then put into them to make them an even better leader? And I think by having that really full 360 view, you know, with that operational lens from myself as well, really just helps everybody to, to be in the position that we're in now by, by winning the award, you know? Yeah. Do you have any challenges though to self-learning and development? Are there any challenges that you come across operationally? I think there's, um, in, in any business, there's always challenges. Um, I think the, the current climate around COVID-19 is a, is a really good example. People learn in, in different ways. And I think what's really important is how we, how we adapt. So how do we, how do we tailor our approach from what it used to be to what it is now so the, we use the change curve a lot here so we identify where our advisors are on the change curve or team leaders and we'll talk a lot about how we can help them get to move to the next stage but I think what, what I do want to say is I'm really proud of how we've helped support our people especially from the, the working from home thing um, a, a lot of people have been anxious around the whole coronavirus situation which is completely natural but I think at the pace and speed that we have moved um, to get people working from their place of choice has really helped to um, put them at ease, but actually also help them to learn. Because when you're in an environment where you feel safe, uh, I think that's that's absolutely fundamental. Another part of that, Sarah, is some of the support tools that we have here. So we have um, invested heavily in mental health training. You know, we're, we're all advocates of you know if you've got a if you've got a healthy mind, that'll put you in a really great position to help service your customer. And I think some of the tools that we have around the well-being app. Um, the pick up the phone service um, from a mental health perspective there's always somebody there to speak to a professional you know if if need be and I think by creating that really safe environment for people it's an opportunity where people just grow and grow and grow uh, and we're definitely start, starting to see the fruits of the labour from that. Yeah absolutely you can see that a lot of our members are saying that they've seen an improvement in engagement scores and customer NPS and customer satisfaction and performance. Have you seen that as well from your team? Yeah, definitely. I think it's, it, it's twofold. Um, I think one, the fact that people are working from the place of choice and they really feel as if the business are, are giving back, which is a really important point. But actually, I think customers like to know that a company the size of BT, what they're doing for their employees. And sometimes when I look at some of the feedback that comes through, part of it is the amazing service that we'll give anyway. But another part of it is actually the flexibility where customers are actually saying in the, in the MPS surveys, they're saying, I spoke to Stephen today who is working from home and he provided me with a seamless service. So I really feel like there's, you know, there's an opportunity to grow even further from a working from home perspective. But actually, if you look at the productivity that we get from the back of um, people being in their play, work, workplace of choice, uh, understanding why we're doing it, but actually feeling supported, which is the, the key thing that I'm trying to land here, I think is uh, seeing a massive difference across all of our areas of performance. Yeah, brilliant. Wonderful. Great stuff. Thank you for joining us. Thanks very much. Thank right. you. Thank you. So um, next, I'd like to invite Lee. Hi, Lee. Welcome. How are you? Hello. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, good. Oh, you're, you're definitely at home with that guitar in the background. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm at home. Are you going to play a song for us later? <laughs> uh, I can't be that cool. Unfortunately, it's my wife's guitar, so I can't claim to be uh, really cool, like I say. Oh, <laughs> welcome. So you're, you're a team manager at BT, aren't you? Yes, yes. Tell us a little bit about what, what your role, what you do day to day. Absolutely. Yeah. Before I answer that question, I'd just like to say, well, thrilled at Newcastle to win the award. It's, you know, it's a real big sense of pride there. So, um, yeah, like I say, everybody's really excited. So um, my role as a, a team leader really is to deliver operational excellence um, uh, across key, key measures, really. Um, all around the customer, you know, are we building valuable and strong and long lasting relationships? Full potential um, and you know getting the best performance possible from those guys process you know we we always like to know that when we do things we you know can we be can we be better and um, so we do a lot of feedback with process are we doing things you know leaner for the customer for the advisors who you know who are answering the calls day to day and um, lastly compliance really you know when we do all of this are we doing it right you know are we are we making sure that everything is you know on board and 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 worthwhile and and, and correct like i say so there's a lot of things to do um very very busy but very enjoyable at the same time so what what do you think it is that makes newcastle center a center of excellence then amongst other sites absolutely yeah um for me 
me personally, uh, it's the diversity. Uh, it's the diversity in the workforce. It's also the what, what the, the guys before me touched on, the, the diversity of, of work that we do in Newcastle. You know, you, you look at um, all the different things that were mentioned, commercial sport, my personal, personal favourite, of course, and um, chat, help, testing. You know, there's lots there to do and a real diverse workforce to, to help us, you know, achieve what we want to achieve for the customer. Great stuff. And how's your role changed with COVID? And because you're obviously remote, and you, you know you can't touch and feel your team and kind of be amongst mm -hmm. them. How how's that changed? Yeah. You know, you know it is. Uh, initially, I was uh, um, you know a bit apprehensive about it all, if I'm being honest. But um, once we're up and running from, from really from the get go of working from home, doing the the virtual meetings, etc it's it's good you know people are enjoying it and um people are really comfortable and you know i, I know from the performance stats that we get productivity's gone up so um you know really uh, people have really taken this on and you know there's a lot of autonomy out there and you know they're really stepping up and i'm really proud of them yeah so um, so you'll still be recruiting as you would as you were before what would a new person expect to experience when they came to to be a team well, you have to think for me, the, the best way for me to answer this question is to give you a, a real example of someone I, I recommended to, to come and work for BT. The, uh, a friend of mine was looking for a, a new exciting challenge. We were recruiting at the time, so and this is not long ago, and, uh, and he came, uh, he was successful in the interview, and um, he, he loved it from the start, and with the right attitude, and with the right um, you know work ethic now he, he, he was always interested in being an engineer you know he came in though and you know he was very keen to help our customers on the front line um, but you know was always shown an interest to be an engineer and the fact that we he used all the resources available to him and you know the good relationships that he had with his manager and you know and you know, leaders as well you know above that um, he's managed to secure a, a position as a as a, um, an engineer within six months. So that just shows you how quick and and you know, someone can get what they you know they they desire as a as a career path um, quite easily. And what do you consider to be the kind of the big the big things that make the, the experience so positive for agents? You know what is what is the experience? I think you know if you look back on the thread of the um, what the the guy said before me, it's it's all the same. It's the it's the level of training that you know you're, you're offered, and and it's the level of resources and great relationships, specifically within Newcastle, that you know the the world is out there for you. And I think for me again, it's the it's we've created a, a, a you know an environment of trust. And when you've got that trust, uh, you know, within your workforce, you know, anything can be achieved. Brilliant. Wonderful. Thanks for joining me, Lee. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. So, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring Michael back, actually. Are you coming back, Michael? I think we've got some questions. Um, I think I think they've been answered, but I don't know whether you want to kind of expand on some. Some people were talking about the um, live chat, Michael. Yeah, definitely. I, I think we had a, a few questions about the, the chat. Um, so, like I said, it, it is quite a new, newly formed team. Um, we started originally with, with 15 advisors, uh, but we then expanded this to, to 30 advisors because we, we saw the, the need and the demand uh, for the guys. Um, with the work that guys do, this is incremental improvements in the way of customers' journeys because uh, we speak to probably around about 400 customers a day between the small team. Um, and when we survey them, around about 80% of these customers say they definitely would not have rang BT. So these aren't customers that were just taken away from the calls. So it's not like it's improving sort of like the, the customer journey. It is customers that just wouldn't have rang us. So potentially they might have spoke to another provider, left our company with never having an interaction with, with us. Um, because the way that the new process lies now, that customer can leave without speaking to anybody. Um, and we don't want that with, with the way that we're loyalty. We want to speak to our customer, make sure we know that they understand we value them. So yeah, so they're definitely improvements. Um, and we do have the functionality as well. One of the questions was about, uh, can they do inbound and outbound calling? So the guys that are in this are totally uh, multiple skilled. 
Um, the guys were taken from either inbound and outbound previous roles into chats. Um, if it was a case that we were um, had a massive demand in a way of the inbound calls and we didn't have the demand on chat, then we could easily just switch a, flip, a quick switch, switch, and then uh, the, the advisor would be on inbound calling or outbound calling. Um, I mean, it is something we've got all set up uh, um, to maybe in the future when we grow this team into a bigger team um, um, to be able to have, say, on chat one hour and then the next hour be on the call taking at the moment the demand is there for chat uh, i think this is our customers are, are very digital um, they might be sitting at, ho at work working and then be on chat at the same time um, so i think we, we're no need to switch at the minute no, great yeah thank you i don't think we had any other questions apart from the chat one. There, there was one there was one other question i, I, I said on the q and would answer at the end um, yeah. and i think uh, yeah. everybody can maybe chip in if anyone needs to but one of the questions was about did we have the technology set up um, for working from home and how quick did it happen um, so I, I'd say that the truthful answer is we, no we didn't um, I don't think anyone are planned and prepared for doing this we don't have um, online customer facing advisors working from home so there was no format uh, I'm ready to go so it did take us a short period of time to get everything up and working the first phase of it was uh, making sure our advisors had the right uh, um, ability to work from home in a way did they have a secure room did they have a, a desk? Uh, um, uh, what sort of provided uh, provider's speed did they have in, in their household? Uh, um, so that was the first stage of it because obviously they, they speak to the customers so they need to be secure. Uh, um, once we got that sort of information, uh, um, we then uh, had to create some software to be downloaded onto the, the PCs so the advisors can then physically take their PC home with them uh, um, and start working from home. Um, but we've also then had to be, again, very versatile and change in the way we work and create additional team because we don't take any type of payments from home. So if a, if a customer needs to pay, make a payment, the advisor has an easy way of putting them through to another colleague of them that's based in the call center that would then go ahead and make, and make a payment. So we've totally changed the way we work, our business, and made a thing in the future. I think someone uh, summed up brilliantly the other day on a call that I was on to say that our home working was a project in the making. And probably a project that might have taken two years to do for, from somebody, but we managed to do it within a space of about two weeks. So nice. there, there is some positives out of this, and I think we will see this as being something in the future. Yeah, absolutely. There's that. Um, what, what was the thing that enhanced your strategy? Was it COVID 19? I think that's it, isn't it? People have kind of um, you know, had to accelerate plans. Um, what we're finding now is, um, as you said, now all the kit and the technology is up and all the software and you can talk to customers. It's almost now business as usual and you've, and you've got to find a way to be able to engage not only your customers and your colleagues and your teams and run your teams. Are you finding you're in that phase now and, and kind of what does that feel like? So sorry, I missed the first part of it, Sarah. You broke up. I was just saying, um, you know, things have moved on now. We've been working from home for quite a while, haven't we? You know, and it's almost it's, business as usual, isn't it? Does it feel like that? Yeah, yeah, De definitely. I think I think this has probably been been the week for me. Um, I think the last couple of weeks has been getting slightly uh, more to sort of normality, as much as we can say that word. Um, for this week, uh, um, I've definitely felt that we're we're, we're exactly. making massive Tell progress. Yeah. Michelle Chapman. I told Michelle last night it was cancelled. Two seconds there. I yeah. think. No, it's uh, all right. It's okay, Michael. Go on. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's okay. It's just, I think Jill's not on mute there. Um, <laughs> um, so, uh, so definitely, yeah, I think, I think this week is, uh, um, yeah, like I said, the normality week. And I've spoken and joined several sessions on Teams this week uh, with uh, uh, huddles with people in and outside the building. And everybody said similar sort of themes that we're starting to get uh, um, normal sort of call routine. The customers uh, are ringing us, seem to be uh, um, slightly more uh, relaxed in the way of the conversation they want is more around their business. Uh, um, and we're actually feeling it, it ourselves. And it's, it's been really good to be honest. I think this is probably, I'd say the best I've felt for, for, for months now. Uh, um, and I think everybody around me is exactly the same. Yeah, brilliant, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for today. Thank you um, for, to all the team for sharing. Just just before we go, I just want to um, just go through some, just remind everybody of all the events that we've got um, coming up. As I mentioned before, we've got all the special interest groups. Please look on the website for all the dates for those. And um, we've got the Peninsula event on the 10th of June and then the future of retail contact centers on the 17th of June as well. 
So just big thanks for joining us today. For everybody who's, who's logged in today and listened to the B team, a huge thank you to Michael, Jill, Lee, Stephen, and uh, Gemma, and Sam as well for answering our questions. Um, as I did mention before, we will be putting this on our website along with any other QA that, that you've got. Um, yeah, and just a huge thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks to the BT team. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. See you soon. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.